there I'd built. And uh, I, uh, <laughs> when I, they asked where it was, I told well, when we said they would have it today, we meant 12 o'clock midnight today. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I put it together, and it was supper time. We got it together, turned it on, it didn't work. And Ivan Easton was with us, and he said, why don't we all quit and go out for lunch, for supper? We went out to supper and came back, and we fixed it up, and at 11 o'clock we handed them the finished product, which they then drove to New York. And it wasn't until later I learned that the reason was that they had a 7 o'clock meeting with the Air Force, and this was the only working piece of equipment they had on their contract to demonstrate that they were doing. Oh, wow. And, uh, but uh, that was a... Uh, Line voltage regulator for, I can't come up with the name of that. Defense not the dew line, but I know what you mean. It came later. Yeah, yeah. it was a later one. Yeah. It'll on, we also did a military one on the dew line, and that was interesting too, the funny thing that would never happen today. We took a, another contract for a militarized line voltage regulator uh, with very short delivery time, and parts of it were already approved like the panels on which they'd be mounted and all that, and we had to use those. We couldn't change any of that. But at any rate, I, uh, uh, we took the contract, and I was the one who was going to put all this together and make it work. But I had already uh, laid plans to take my vacation at that time because we were <laughs> expecting a child, and I was to stay home with the kids while my wife had the baby. I couldn't move the date. And uh, there was no way it, I was going to be able to do that. But uh, we uh, managed to get it done. George Clemo and Ivan Easton and I uh, would work on it. I would make some drawings and sketches, and they would take them into work. And the next day, they'd bring them out that night. And we'd go over it again and review it. And together, we got it done at my home. But uh, I had all the parts then to assemble, but there was one missing part that I had forgotten to get that we needed, and it was a very low leakage diode, which uh, was lower leakage than any that were advertised at that time, but I knew that, uh, that uh, I think it was Transitron was making them. And I called Transitron, and uh, they said, well, they had some stuff on the assembly line at the moment that they could uh, convert. If I could send somebody over, they could get me one. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> the motors and all were special motors. And I called Bodine and uh, asked them if they could change the gear ratio in one of their motors, and they said sure. And they got it, flew it back to me in a couple of days. No paperwork, no yeah. order, no yeah. nothing. It just I just said Genrad, and they said okay, we'll bill you later. Yeah, you couldn't do that today. Can't no, do that can't today. do that today. But uh, Genrad's name was uh, just golden, and if you said it was Genrad, they uh, would do anything for you and then not worry about the paperwork at all. Yep. And uh, I got that together and got it out to Raytheon. That was for the due line and had uh, a sh deadline on the last ship that was going to be able to get up there with his heavy equipment. And wow. they were not happy about trying to fly it in. So. Sure. Cold War days was yeah, this. We yeah, we did make that. And uh, that was interesting. Good. This all is all Mac Holchi finishing his story. Because I think I might have screwed up the earlier recordings. We'll find out. <laughs> we'll stop this one and maybe don't.